So tonight I wanted to uh, film a, a live video, just uh, sharing some uh, strategies and techniques I use in Muay Thai, uh, for my own pleasure and for yours as well, if ever you, you find it useful, say it down in the comments or whatever, tell me what you think about the different techniques. Alright, let's start with it. Okay guys, I hope you hear me from here. Uh, so the first technique I want to talk about is uh, the concept of uh, setting up your range. So what do I mean by setting up your range? So your jab is not the same range as a hook or as a low kick or as a front kick. So you have different ranges in uh, sparring. So you have to time your range so it's an effective uh, shot. So what do I mean by that? So imagine someone's uh, outside of your striking range. So what's the longest tool you have to strike them first? What's the, the, the tool that you have that has the most range, the one that would be easiest to touch your opponent with? It would be with a T, right? So um, what you can do is start with the longest range technique you have, so the T, and then come in with a shorter range technique. So set up your shorter range technique with a longer one. It helps you gauge, gauge the distance, but as well, it helps you cut the distance. Cut the distance and uh, lessen the risk of uh, getting countered or, uh, yeah, or getting countered pretty much. Uh, if you go in straight with a short range technique, you have to bridge the gap with steps, and while you're stepping to bridge the gap, you, um, you obviously put yourself in danger to get countered to to get shot uh, and not to, to be kept at distance as well so how do you prevent it you set up your close range shot with your long range shot so basically uh, your teep would be pretty much as like not necessarily but your teep is the wrong is the longest range so this especially works very well for tall people because tall people uh, obviously have longer range than shorter people so uh, their teep will be even longer than their, at their opponent's teep. So they can set up their, their shorter range techniques even better. Uh, so uh, I can give you a couple examples. Like you can start to come in with a teep and then come in with a switch kick, right? Because the teep is longer than a switch kick. And after the switch kick, you can come in with a jab, then with a cross, right? What did I, what did I do right there? I set up the switch, switch kick with a teep, right? I set up the jab with a switch kick, and I set up the cross with a jab. So I implemented, uh, I got closer and closer to my opponent and used more and more devastating uh, tools. Not that the switch kick or the teep can't be, but uh, uh, yeah, obviously I have to come with the elbows and knees, and it's a more, more effective way to uh, use those different striking techniques. Okay, um, so uh, another concept I want to talk about is how to fight an aggressive fighter, you know? So, if, if you have an aggressive fighter, right, someone that's constantly pressuring you, you have different techniques you can use to, 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 to counter the, the pressure fighter. Obvious, obviously, a pressure fighter, you don't want to uh, stand there like a bag and just get hit without planning or <clears throat> without uh, trying to find openings in the, the aggressive fighter. So what you can do first is use your footwork to circle around your opponent and <clears throat> to lessen the, the strength of the different uh, strikes while keeping your eyes open and looking for the counter shot. Because often aggressive fighters, they have holes in their game. Everyone has holes in their game, but obviously at some point, if you're too aggressive, you open yourself to be countered. So what I can advise is to use your footwork, keep your eyes open, keep your guard tight, and look for that opportunity to counter. So. What do I mean like that by that? I'll try to demonstrate it. 
Okay, so if there's an aggressive fighter coming at you, well, I'll try to use your footwork, all right? Block the different shots, all right? Keep your eyes open. Use your long guard to keep the distance. And once you, once he gives a, a sign of an opening, like if he gives like a cross with your long guard, come in with a counter and keep circling around him, all right? Keep circling around him and keep your eyes wide open. If you start seeing that he comes in too aggressively and his arms are too open, you can like block one of his hooks or whatever and come in with an elbow. And keep moving. Keep moving. Okay? That's a pretty good uh, strategy to counter uh, aggressive, aggressive fighters. Um, after, if you come to a situation where you have a hard time finding openings, right? Where the aggressive fighter is very aggressive and uh, you're being overwhelmed. Well, you have to fight fire with fire. So at some point, you just have to open your eyes, be very present, and try to, you, you have to counter each, like you have to counter the aggression with your aggression. So if he's getting flurries of punches, well, you'll have to be, start getting flurries, would it be with punches and elbows or knees, but you have to, uh, counter his aggression and keep your eyes open for uh, the so you can time his strategy and his movements better than he does sometimes aggressive fighters are very emotional so when they come uh, towards you they come with an emotion and a lot of uh, that emotion blinds them of their technique so if you keep, keep yourself calm relaxed cool keep your eyes open uh, you can be the more collected one, and you might get get one. Or, he might get one or two shots in, but overall, uh, you can get the edge uh, often if you stay collective, calm, and look for the counter shot, and um, try to look at how he's he's uh, what he's doing, uh, how he's what's his strategy, and how he's, he's fighting, and all the different. Uh, quirks of his style and and how you can counter it. Yeah, so like if you have an aggressive fighter coming in straight with your with their left right left right and keep left right left right. Well, a simple strategy. First, you can do like I said before. Move around, block his moves, and once you understood what he's doing, the simple strategy is every time he does a right, you move your head on, you slip your head on the right, and you counters across. Then you slip your head on your right, on your left, on the right, sorry. <laughs> so you slip your, your head on the right, you cross, slip your left head on the right, and you do a straight. And you can counter him by just pivoting your head like this. Rather than if you go straight without pivoting, you go straight and you pivot. All right? So the tool here is to watch what he's doing. You really have to watch at him, look at him, and look look at what's his style and how he's being aggressive so you find the proper tool so you can start which with going backwards analyzing him keeping your, your guard uh, tight high keeping him at a distance with your teeth going backwards circling him on the right side so you keep far from his power shot and once you understood how what's his style and what he's doing you can counter him and also try to time counters. So yeah, that's uh, also a second strategy I want to give out. Okay guys, I got out of this, that, that situation there. <laughs> okay, so next concept I wanna talk about is, is I can hear them quite loudly, is about having a very good base. Very good, I mean base, what I mean. Uh, very good um, being very stable on your footwork on your your guard on your 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 basic positioning right so on your basic position you want to be quite stable it's not always the case but like on in, in some situations um, why would you like to have a very stable base so it's hard to push you around so if a guy uses a long guard and just pushes you, if you're not stable on your footwork, on your base, you could fall quite easily.
So you, it's always a battle between stability and movement, right? Uh, you see TIE fighters. TIE fighters are usually extremely stable on their footwork. They're very stable and they, they're very difficult to move. When you see the difference with a, uh, a K-1 fighter or, or a full contact fighter who is way more mobile, right? Um, so there's pros and cons of both, obviously. But I like the TIE style, personally. Because if you're more stable, you have a better base, and so it's difficult, more difficult to to uh, sweep you. It's more difficult to uh, control you, to move you around, and your strikes are also sometimes stronger. But you can use also the momentum of of movement to generate a lot of strength and power in your shots. But it's a, it's, a, it's a very complex topic you have to discover for yourself. You have to uh, test and try. Try a stable base, a less stable base. Uh, try different, uh, uh, different styles and see what works best in different situations. But usually I recommend a more stable base. Uh, make stable, make uh, to do uh, some very uh, um, uh, well-balanced footwork you know steps very balanced steps slow steps in your sparring to not run all over the place and to cut cut distance slowly little by little uh, so you are more stable and more more collected than if you run all over the place uh, but uh, yeah definitely definitely depends styles you know I've uh, I usually when I fight with a very mobile person I try to sweep them a lot because I know they'll be jumping all over the place and they won't have very very uh, strong uh, stability and so they'll be easy more easily swept and low kicks will also be very very effective against them because they would have a hard time checking because if you're jumping around checking kicks are way more difficult uh, so there's different strategies that you can use to fight a mobile fighter and a very, very stable fighter as well. Um, being stable is good for countering as well because if you're stable, you can you can withstand a shot uh, a shot and counter. But if you're very mobile, uh, you would usually be uh, if you could take a shot, you would you would be ten you have a tendency to be uh, moved around where the shot where the, the power of the shot is it's throwing so if you're you're very you're a very movement based fighter if you get a get um, roundhouse kicked on the, with your left or your right you will usually tend to go in the direction of the roundhouse but if you're more stable you can withstand it and come back forward afterwards so it's a different it's a, it's a battle of the frames but a mobile person can stay in the outside as well so you have to find uh, the right the right balance between between the two. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna end it here. Uh, this whole thing where my friends came and stuff it sort of bummed it out. But uh, I think I gave out some good strategies here. I think I gave out three good strategies for you to try in your your training and your Muay Thai and your boxing, your K1 and whatever, and your striking. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, uh, you got some value out of it, put down in the comments, uh, share your strategies, uh, tell, yeah, share your strategies, uh, say what you think about mine, and uh, yeah, chat me up if ever you want to discuss about it, I am, I'll answer you guys, and uh, yeah, alright, see you.